and welcome everyone. I am so grateful to be here um, as one of the coaches to give to get. So welcome to the Boomerang family, everyone. All right, so today we're gonna go through a process. Now to learn to build and maintain healthy boundaries, part two. Okay, so I'm gonna pull up a slide first just to share who I am. So just give me a second while I share my screen. There we go, all right. Okay, so we got the shared screen. Okay, so just one moment as I, I'm gonna, it's a little bit of a recording, but there's no audio, I'm gonna talk through it. So here we go. Okay, so welcome to Mindset Mastery with Stefan Neff. So who is Stefan Neff? Well, Stefan was born and raised in Langley, British Columbia. I have two kids. One is 20 and one is 30. So who is Stefan? Well, Stefan had alcohol and drug addictions for 35 years until he found a solution that worked. It's called Smart Recovery, Self-Management and Recovery Training, based on science using CBT, Rational Emotive Behavior Tools that work. So today, we're going to talk about learn how to build and maintain healthy boundaries, part two. And if you haven't seen part one, please go back and watch that one first. So let's get started. We're going to get started in just, just a moment. All right, so just give me just a few seconds while I get prepared. Okay, so part two. So why are boundaries relevant in our life? Well, the truth is that all people in healthy relationships have healthy boundaries. Boundaries require protection to be effective. In a perfect world, everyone communicates their boundaries calmly and clearly. And those around them respect their requests for appropriate behavior and they all live happily ever after. I want to do a little recap for part one. Learning how to set boundaries is a necessary step in learning to be a friend to ourselves and others. Since boundaries are about self and not about the other, they are best communicated in the form of an I statement. And I've mentioned this before. Formula for communicating a boundary request. Repeat that one more time. Formula for communicating a boundary request. First, inform. When you do your behavior, I feel, then my reaction. Then it goes to request. Can I ask you to stop or change this behavior to our loved ones? Since we don't live in a perfect world, Others sometimes do choose to disregard our boundary requests and the inappropriate behavior continues. If this happens, it may be beneficial to clearly and calmly restate your boundary request several times over a period of days or weeks. Here's a reminder. Boundaries communicated to a loved one who is intoxicated may not be heard or remembered. However, if a boundary is continually ignored, even after repeated requests, then we have the responsibility to ourselves to protect the boundary, not just one time, but every time from now on. Remember, actions speak louder than words. Consistent Consistently of our actions, sorry, consistency of our actions is the best way to protect our boundaries. Formula, no, let's see. Formula for communicating planned protective action. If a boundary request continues to be ignored, then we go into the formula, inform. When you do your behavior, I feel means my reaction. Again, request, can I ask you to stop and change this behavior? Then inform. If you are, and this is an example, if you are not willing to stop this behavior, I will need to take protective action. And now here's some examples with inform. When you raise your voice, it hurts me. And it scares our children. And then here's the request. I've asked you several times over the last few weeks to speak in a normal volume when talking to me 
or the kids. But nothing has changed. Now you go to inform. From now on, when you raise your voice, the kids and I will go to grandma's for the evening. Keep it positive. And really, in really significant boundaries, conversation when you are confronting someone about a serious problem, and I'll give you an example. I'm concerned that you, your drinking is out of control. It can be very helpful to set the tone for the conversation by starting off with a positive I statement that affirms and validates how important your relationship with the other person is. And I'll give you an example here. John, I want you to know that the reason I'm bringing this up is because I love and am committed to our relationship. I love and value, I, I love and value so many things about you. In fact, that's why I have to talk to you about this. Very important. You've heard there's multiple I statements. Protective action. When first learning about boundaries, many concerned significant others confuse the action needed to protect a boundary with making a choice to punish the loved one for their actions. It may be helpful to recall in, in the book, Get Your Loved One Sober. Does not recommend punishment and pointing out punishments because they backfire. Instead, they suggest a simple and powerful action for protecting your boundaries. So disengage, remove yourself from the situation. In many cases, some variations of disengage is sufficient to communicate the seriousness of your boundary request. The first time you found yourself, find yourself communicating your plan to take positive action you may not have the time to decide what you're going to do. In that case, you may just restate calmly and a matter of factly, if you are unwilling or not willing to do this, I'll need to make some decisions about what I'm going to do. Now let's talk about planning a boundary request. Using the boundary request formula, inform, request, and then inform again. So plan a boundary request for each of these following scenarios, okay? So what I want you to do is listen very carefully. These are scenarios. When my loved one is actively engaged with her addiction, she is disagreeable and unpleasant to be around, or she passes out. In response, I waver between anger, despair, and sadness. So these are just some scenarios. Number two scenario. When my loved one is actively engaged with his addiction, he often falls, fails to show up for things that I have planned and sometimes disappears for hours or days at a time. In response, I feel frustrated and hurt as his disrespectful behavior. Number three, when my loved one is actively using he sometimes steals from me. In response, I feel angry and I also feel sad, knowing that I cannot be trusted. Sorry, he cannot be trusted. Number four, I wish my wife didn't drink so much when I'm at work. I know she sometimes drinks until she passes out. I am scared that she cannot, that she cannot be woken up when the baby is crying or my oldest child will not be able to wake her up and will think that she is dead. Very powerful. I wish she would not drink with the kids around. On a scale of one to five, would you give yourself a five on achieving what you want in life? If your answer is anything less than a five, right now, I have something awesome for you. Achieving your goals and living your life out of five isn't easy. Most people aren't prepared to focus, stay disciplined, and do the everyday work that is necessary to achieve amazing results. But since you're watching this, then I'm guessing that you're not one of those people. And this is an opportunity that will change your life. 
Give to Get is a global program that brings together world-class coaching and combines it with empowering masterminds and networking opportunities. We provide five-star guidance for the price of a cup of coffee a day. To find out more, click on the link in the description of this coaching session. Okay, let me talk about the roles of boundaries in healthy relationships. Healthy relationships happen when an act, let me repeat this one more time. Healthy relationships happen when we actively and consistently respect each other's rights and preferences. They are based on equality and mutual respect. They are based on healthy boundaries. All relationships have boundaries. And when they are respected, the need for continued reminder about those boundaries is rarely necessary anymore. But when the problem arises, such as addiction, and the behavior that comes with it, it becomes necessary to make boundaries clear, to let the other person know that their behavior is disrespectful or harmful, and that, and that you don't want to, it to continue. Just give me a second, I'll like have a drink. And I'm gonna give you some examples here so, that you may find unacceptable. So love one borrows money. They cannot or do not pay back. And these are examples. Loved one expecting financial support from you while you're spending their money on addictions. Let me repeat that. And that's happened to me. Is your loved one expecting financial support from you? It means the loved one. It means significant other. While spending their own money on addictions. And that's what I was doing. I was expecting money from my, it means my spouse, right? to live my daily piece from my job, lunch, whatever it may be, but I was actually going and spending it on beer. So I'll give you another example. Loved ones lying in any way to cover up the truth about their activities. Loved one takes, uh, is, is taking long absence or putting lives at risk by drinking and driving, very important. So I'm gonna talk about my boundaries cannot make you do anything. As much as we want our loved ones to stop the behavior related to the addiction, it's important to understand that the purpose of boundaries is not to punish the other person or manipulate them to, into changing their lifestyle. The truth, is, the truth is that one person's boundaries cannot make another one person change. And let me re repeat that one more time. The truth is that one person's boundaries cannot make the other person change. It may give them a good reason to choose to change. See how we word to use choose to change, but they retain their own power of choice. We may not like it if we choose not to change, but we would do well to accept that they have the right to choose for themselves. Our power of choice includes our abilities to let them know how their behavior are impacting us and to offer them the chance to stop the damage of our relationship before it gets too late, before things get out of, uh, out of hand and get to a point where we have to build a wall. And I mentioned this in part one, building a wall is like a brick wall as you can't see that person instead of building boundaries and boundaries are fences. We do, we do this by taking responsibility for our calmly, clearly, and consistently communicating our boundaries on a continuous basis. Like I said before, walls are for keeping people out. And hopefully with effective, healthy boundaries, we won't find ourselves needing to build a wall to keep our loved ones out of our lives. Here's a reminder. Protecting your boundaries is not a way to punish others or manipulate them into complying with our own wishes. It is not to sign or disrespect for others' needs. It is a sign of respect for yourself and for the relationship. I'm gonna talk about some boundaries 
some anecdotes for enabling. So this is disabling the enabler. So we discuss in depth the reason to disable the enabling. And the fact that nagging, pleading, and threatening are not helpful and often have a, a effect of enabling or allowing the addictive behavior to continue. If the communication in our relationship with our loved one has, I would say, uh, deteriorated to the point where we have frequent nagging, pleading, and arguing, we may want to choose a different method of communication, especially since these methods have, the methods have been shown to contribute to an environment that enables the addiction. It is not easy to change communication styles. I get that, but it can be done. We can learn to communicate in a different way. With positive communication, assertive communication, and boundaries are effective tools we can use to communicate honestly and clearly. They are tools we can use instead of nagging, pleading, and arguing to let others in our lives know that, behave, that the behaviors are acceptable and which are not acceptable to us. So what behaviors are acceptable and not acceptable in our lives? Rather than a drama of nagging, pleading, and threatening, we can use these tools to show our loved one clearly and calmly and consistently that their behavior is not acceptable. And then we leave it up to them. We leave it up to them to decide what, if anything, they want to do about it. In, in other words, by communicating our boundaries, we meet our responsibility for disabling the enabling and allow our loved ones to become fully responsibility for their own problems. Now I want to, I'm going to have a little drink first. So I want to talk about is called hurt versus harm. So enabling the behavior and addiction have something in common. You might be thinking, hmm, both are quick fixes, short-term solutions. They have the desired effect, minimalizing pain or discomfort, but only in the short term. And they have negative long-term consequences. Yes, there is often some discomfort, hurt, involved in protecting boundaries that your loved one is ignoring. Whatever action you have chosen to protect your boundaries, usually uh, disengaging in some way can be a painful for your loved ones. And it also may be painful for, your, for yourself. However, the addiction, however, the addiction you, you take uh, to protect your boundaries, sorry, However, the action you take to protect your boundaries as uncomfortable as it feels in the moment is minor comparison to the, the, the lasting harm that is caused by the addiction in the first place. Like someone with addictions, you have a choice to continue on the path of short-term gratification or take more a difficult but more rewarding path to a long-term recovery. Here's a great quote. I love this quote. The chief causes to, to, so I'll repeat that one more time. Here's a great quote. The chief causes to failure and unhappiness is trading what you want most for what you want right now. That's a Zig Ziglar. Okay, I'm going to talk about the five steps to establish healthy, healthy boundaries. So five steps to establish healthy boundaries. In order to establish healthy boundaries between yourself and others, number one, identify the symptoms of your boundaries currently being or have been violated or ignored. Some symptoms to look for. Anger, frustration, feeling powerless or hopeless. I'll give you an example. My partner is often late for dinner and I'm sick and tired of eating all alone. Number two, take responsibility for your own upsets. Identify the irrational or unhealthy thinking and beliefs which are fueling any high drama, anger, frustration, 
anxiety, sadness you are experiencing over the behavior. Here's a great tool. And I mentioned this in part one. So we'll go look back at it. It's called the ABC tool. So A stands for activating event. B is the belief. C is the consequence of emotional feeling. D is disputing the irrational belief. E is effectively changed to a new way of thinking and a new rational way of thinking or feeling as well. Also is another one, exchange vocabulary can be a very helpful tool for this. Number three, identify new, more rational, healthy thinkings or beliefs. Rational, healthy, healthy thinking will lead to less anger and frustration in your life and put you in a better position to communicate your boundaries calmly, clearly, and consistently. And I'll give you an example. Rather than saying, quit in order to avoid conflict, I will stand up for myself so that others can learn to respect my rights and my needs in the relationship. Number four, identify any new skills. For example, assertive communication. You want to work on in, in order to sustain healthy boundaries between you and the other person. The key word is sustain, like fences. Personal boundaries require maintenance. So just remember this. Sometimes we have to repaint the fence or we have to add new pieces of wood or we also have to sometimes replace them too as well. So maintenance. Number five, implement healthy boundaries. Boundary building beliefs and behaviors in your life. Healthy boundaries is building behaviors, managing the need for approval, managing fear of rejection, improving assertive communication skills, developing self control, and setting goals in your life. Let's talk about healthy boundary building beliefs. This is this is a powerful statement. So I'll just. If you have a pen and paper, I would, I would love for you to write these down and use them as eyes. I have the right to ask for what I want. I have the right to have my needs and wants respected by others. I have the right to be treated with dignity and respect. I have the right to be happy. I have the right to express all of my feelings positive or negative. I have the right to follow my own values and standards. I have the right not to be responsible for others' behaviors, actions, feelings, or problems. I have the right to, to expect honesty from others. I have the right not to be given excuses or reasons for my behavior. I have the right to make decisions based on my feelings. I have the right to be in a non-abusive environment or relationship. I have the right to feel safe in my own home. This is adapted by Dr. James J. Masenas, a healthy boundaries specialist. I'm just gonna share some of those tips first. I'm gonna get a drink of a little water for a second. So tips for setting boundaries. Remember why we make boundary requests. Boundary requests are often are an effective way to say, this is important to me. Please pay attention. My boundary requests are not a way to punish our loved one for unwanted addictive behaviors. Next one, start small. Build up your boundary skills by starting with small requests delivered to others not your loved one to gain experience and confidence. Let me repeat that. It sounded, that actually sounded pretty funny. So small, <laughs> start small, build up boundary skills by, by starting with small requests delivered to others to gain experience and confidence. Delivery. Boundaries are best delivered using positive and assertive, non-aggressive communication. Consider using the PIUS, so P-I-U-S, positive I statements, understanding and sharing responsibility, communication model, described in the 
part one of the setting healthy boundaries. Timing, boundary requests benefit from being planned ahead of time. Okay, so planning ahead of time. They are best shared with your loved one when you are feeling calm and clear and when your loved one is sober. Yeah, super important. And I call it the three C's. Okay, the three C's. And I'm going to go through the three C's of boundary. Communication. Be calm. Be clear. Be consistent. The three C's. Be calm, clear, and consistent. So, Calm boundaries are best delivered respectful, respectfully, and a matter of factly. Be clear, straightforward communication without uh, extraneous exp explanating. Consistent, stay on the message and follow through with your plan to protect your boundaries as a need for everything, every single time, definitely every single time. Prepare to be challenged. Yeah, sometimes it happens. Your loved one may verbally challenge your boundaries. Claiming it is unfair or harsh. Your boundaries respected your personal, remember your personal preferences. You have the right to hold and express personal preferences. And you are obligated to defend your merits. Remember that boundaries are clear communication about what you want and what you intend to do to protect the boundary. If it is not honored, your loved one has a choice to honor your request or not. That's a choice. Attempting to argue with your, about the merits of your boundaries may be best deferred to a simple repeating your boundaries calmly, clearly, and consistently again. So plan to protect the boundary. Your loved one may forget your boundary request or may not take it seriously. It could possibly happen. Know that it is relative common. This is common. And be prepared to follow through on your plan to protect your boundaries and your needs every single time. Because if we go backwards and we let it go, oh, he's doing fine, he's doing fine for months on end, and all of a sudden, Boundaries started to be ignored again, and all of a sudden your your fence starts to break down, and then all of a sudden you're feeling uncomfortable, frustrated, angry, back to the same point again. So every single time. Another one is lead by example. Model the kind of behavior you expect. For example, if you don't want your son or daughter to take drugs at home. Don't you drugs or alcohol yourself. <laughs> Very simple, that's just straightforward. If you don't want your spouse to drink, you may have to make the decision on your own not to drink yourself. Respect is a two-way street. Your loved one has boundaries. Also, to honor your loved one's boundaries, set the tone in the relationship and increase the likelihood that your loved one will respect your boundaries. So thanks everyone. Uh, man, this is the last point I would like to share. Last point. To create healthy boundaries, to create a healthy life within you. So if you want to know more about what uh, Smart Recovery does, this is based on the families and friends. There's great meetings. There's no charge to these meetings all around North America, all around Canada, around the world actually. So it's called Families and Friends. And it's based on craft. So thank you, everyone. I am so grateful that you guys were watching today. So everybody, like I say, live the life that you truly desire and truly deserve in your life and build healthy boundaries. Bye-bye for now. See ya.